Hey everybody, thank you for listening to Filling in the Gaps. Be sure to check us out on our social media pages, at Filling in the Gaps. From there, you can get updates on show releases and anything special we may be doing. Sit back and enjoy the show. Should be a lot of fun. Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Filling in the Gaps. My name is Rich from the Heartland State of Ohio, joined as always by my good friend Cam from down in the biggest and baddest state of Texas. Uh, welcome to our next episode of Filling in the Gaps. Uh, Filling in the Gaps, for those of you guys who don't know, is a tabletop and role playing game uh, podcast where each week, me and Cam take a D20, roll on a random list of themes and scenarios, and mash those two things into hopefully some kind of session that you can use to spice up your next game night. We know that DMing week after week after week can be exhausting. Sometimes you just need a little bit of inspiration to help you think of an idea that you can go off for your next big adventure. That's what this is. It's not an actual play podcast. It's just all about the brainstorming. So, welcome. Uh, Cam, anything to announce this week? Yes. Um... Thanks again for listening, everybody. Next week, we will be doing our special spooky Halloween Ooh. episode. We have a specific table dedicated purely to Halloween-based ideas. So if you've got any, uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter using the F-I- hashtag FITG, uh, hashtag with a theme or a scenario. Uh, you can reach out to us in any way through any of our social media platforms, but that should be a very, very fun episode. We're actually going to be doing an announcement on that episode of the winner of our dice giveaway. Uh, we're doing two dice giveaways, two full sets, actually, a blue set with golden lettering and a green set with spooky purple lettering. Um, spooky purple. And so, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be giving those away. We've been collecting pretty much just a list of people that uh, either like the show or just like free dice or whatever it may be. Um, we have been collecting that slowly but surely, but you can go and like any of the posts that we've done on our corresponding social media websites, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or Reddit, and you'll be entered in to win a free set of dice. Once we do that, we'll be announcing it on next week's show and then getting to the spooky stuff. So excited for that. Boom. Um, but yeah, that's about it for that. Sweet. Sounds Nothing good. Yeah. And also for those of you guys who have been suggesting themes and scenarios over the past few Really, months that we've been doing this. Thank you so much for the suggestions. Maybe also, uh, along with Halloween, adding to kind of the, you know, adding to the monster man- uh, mania. Me and Cam mentioned this last week. It would be sweet to start adding some monsters onto the themes and scenarios list, specific monsters. So if there's any monsters you'd like us to do a session about, whether it's kobolds or gnolls or dragons or whatever, feel free to send those yeah. send those guys in as suggestions as well, and we will add them to the list. It can even be one of your own creations if you'd like. You know, Ooh, uh, that like would be a, sweet. Yeah, just a rendition of something. It, it, like, obviously, just short descriptions, but... Um, it, it, I think that that would be a lot of fun because a lot of our episodes t- seem to boil down into um, specific, singular, uh, focusing around specific monsters. So I think that's a, a really great change of pace for us as well. So, yeah. I like it. I like it. You know what else is a great change of pace for us, Rich? Hmm. What? Shall we roll? Let's do it. So like I said before, what we're about to do is I'm going to be rolling my trusty blue and orange D20. Uh, Cam will be rolling. What well, Cam, what color dice are you rolling today? I am rolling. Uh, I'm actually sticking with the one I used from last week, blue and orange with white lettering. Cool. Yeah. We're sticking with the blue and the oranges. Uh, and I'm going to be rolling for our themes. Cam will be rolling for our scenarios. And that will determine what the rest of this episode is about. So Cam, I'm ready whenever you are. Let's do this thing. Nice. I got a six. Oh, man. And I got an 11. All right. Six and 11. Now, Cam, while you go ahead and look at uh, what those rolls are and who uh, suggested them, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about our fantastic sponsor, Libris Arcana Dice. They are actually the guys who have given us the dice for this giveaway. They look amazing. And Libris Arcana Dice is uh, really Honestly, it's like the dice provider for us. So we're all about randomness. We like uh, we like kind of rolling with the punches. And we also love dice. So because of that, Libris Arcana Dice provided a service where every month they will send you a random set of dice. Or every three months, they will send you three random sets of dice. And you guys can go ahead and make your first order have a 25% off discount by using the promo code FITG on their website, Libris Arcana Dice. 
www.thecrypto.com. You'll also get a little thank you card from us. And make sure you go ahead and either uh, tweet or Instagram or on Reddit, post your new dice and let us know what they look like. But they are a great service. We highly recommend them. And uh, yeah, so make sure you guys check them out. Cam, what was our role and who was it uh, brought to us by? Our themes were brought to us by, um, it looks like nobody. So our own heads. Um, okay. I do remember. I do remember Molly actually speaking about uh, the Day of the Dead. We had actually had long conversations about uh, the Day of the Dead. So I'll give that to him and us as well. Okay. Congratulations, us. Uh, this Yay, is actually. Us. I, I don't think we've done one of our own in a long time. Now that I think it's about been forever. it, forever. So, yeah. Uh, so the Day of the Dead brought to you, listeners, by us and you're welcome listeners <laughs> and number 11 <laughs> um i rolled on 11 on my side the party acquires an evil artifact brought to us by d20 mm. soup speaking of d20 soup you just joined the discord and we've just been having conversations around standard D stuff and it's been a lot of fun to chat with you so thanks for joining and uh coming out of the woodwork for that one so that's awesome but yeah here we are so, Day of the Dead and the party acquires an evil artifact sort of falls right in line with one another. Kind of dig it. Yeah, um, that sounds sweet to me. Dias de las Muertos, we. That is uh, another way you could go with the Day of the Dead. That's, that's so Cam, way to say it. Let me ask you. When you mm-hmm. think of either Day of the Dead or evil artifact, what are the things that pop into your mind? Family. Okay. Family is like the first thing that comes to mind. That's the purpose of the Day of the Dead. is It's a it's a way to honor those who have come before you. And yeah, it's like a respect of ancestors, right? Co- correct. And so I think that associating some type of family to this evil artifact that is um, maybe holding uh, certain maybe on on the day on Dia de los Muertos the uh, the actual people themselves are are being resurrected by this evil artifact or are constantly tormented or this family is unable to forget a memory. But I like the idea of family for the Mm -hmm. day of the dead and lineage and maybe then, and then from evil artifact, I'm going to leave that up to you. What is that? What, what comes to your mind with those two things? Have we done, have we done anything with liches? Uh, Our very first first episode. Yeah, no, not at all. Okay, so mm-hmm. um, liches, part of their thing, I believe, is uh, usually there's this common theme of them having to consume souls yes, um, in order to kind of keep themselves alive. Mm-hmm. That's part of, like, where their Im- immortality comes from. So what if um, a lich takes advantage of this holiday or a wizard wanting to become a lich takes advantage of this holiday – um, all about ancestor worship, all about, you know, respecting, you know, respecting souls that have passed on. And there's yes. this kind of like thinness, you know, then that's kind of what Halloween is all about. Um, there's this thinness in the air where, you know, the supernatural seems a little bit closer. Some Irish mythology kind of has certain spots or times of year as well where there's this this um, this kind of closeness between the realms mm-hmm. of the spiritual and the realms of the of the natural. So maybe because of that as well. As these ancestor souls are approaching this festival, this certain location um, where they're going to be celebrated and they can kind of also see their family, this lich takes advantage of that to kind of tap into this almost, you know, not endless, but massive amount of souls that it can kind of just pull out of the afterlife um, and use to like fuel its evil deeds. Now, what artifact that is, um, man, I kind of, I kind of, I don't want it to be just like a generic, like, that's the only that's the only thing though. Sometimes when we do things around certain artifacts, it can be very much just like, oh, this could be a square artifact or a circle artifact or a mm-hmm. triangle artifact. What what kind of artifact do you want? I'd like this though to be a little bit different somehow. Right. Um, so as far as what it is, um, that's more where I'm like, man. And the party itself. That's the other thing too. Is the party acquires this artifact. So mm-hmm. this isn't something that a bad guy has. Um, or at least if it is something that they have, it's not something that they have, you know, the entire session. The session should be built around the fact that this, uh, that this, that the party has it. So maybe the party acquires this evil artifact. I'm totally maybe breaking what I just said, but maybe the party acquires this evil artifact mm-hmm. and takes it to this Day of the Dead celebration to kind of inquire of um, what is ancestors, this? Yeah, yeah, and be like, hey, what is this? How can we beat this? Et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. So I think that, you know, um, 
there's a large juxta juxtaposition between white and black in uh, like the coloring theme of Day of the Dead. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of that bounces around the art and, and the style. And some of those are used for uh, a lot of that coloring is used for sugar skulls. And mm -hmm. so have you ever heard of sugar skulls before? Mm -mm. Yeah, they're like these massive skulls made out of sugar. They're not massive, but they're they're like life sized. They can be. They can also be really small, but they're they're generally treated as candies or something like that. But they're generally yeah. crystallized on the outside, uh, and it, they're sort of bedazzled, and they're sort of like a a representation of older people from the family itself, and they're just like yeah. little, you know. So I think of this this skull from this family maybe like it's a family of cursed people or something like that and all these different skulls are white skulls that are clean and, and very normal but this one's like black and it's dripping with like an ichor on it and on the sides or something mm -hmm. and you can pop mm -hmm. it open you know because if it's going to be like a portal that is has access to souls then i need i need something that my lich is looking for that your party somehow gains then then begins the the juggling act of like hot potato of trying to keep it away from once as they're trying to figure it out and once they realize that they're trying to figure out what it or the, that what it is then they've started to understand like oh shit <laughs> this guy that's why this lich has been trying to get this thing from us because you know it's containing these evil evil souls that's going to empower this lich even more so and it's like a portal to another realm i don't know it's a, it's a part of a thought to my my head is like what so that artifact could be so what kind of art? What kind of powers does this artifact have? Maybe let's think about that for a little bit, because I feel like the Day of the Dead itself is mm -hmm. is just such a cool, like, perfect little knotted up like. Mm, it's got a bow on it. It's good to go. Got some little sugar on top of it. Got some bedazzled. Boom. That's good to go. Yeah. What? What? Like, what is this artifact? What kind of powers does it have? What's the party dealing with? Like, we could have like a corrupting type nature. I know that at times that's have a, had a really cool effect and also had a really bad effect on parties. So that's kind of mm -hmm. like, uh, be careful. Um, but what kind of powers do you see this artifact having? Hmm. I think entrapment of like a soul was something that, that comes to mind, obviously. I think, um, I don't know, man. Um, it's a difficult okay. one. Ooh, ooh, okay, I found something. So I'm flipping through the DMG. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at page 226 and 227. They've yes. got some, like, pre-made evil artifacts. Yes. Um, and I found one that I think could be perfect. Going off what you were saying about skulls, I'm yeah. thinking we do something with the Wand of Orcus. So, for those of you who aren't aware of the Wand of Orcus, let me uh, describe what it looks like. It's made uh, – the tip of the wand is a skull of a character um, from – that really opposed Orcus. So Orcus took this character's skull, uh, he took its spine, and I think he took like part of its shoulder blade, and he kind of stretched that out and made it into its wand. Um, so let me read. Let me read for you guys what the wand of Orcus, kind of its story behind it. Uh, so the ghastly wand of Orcus rarely leaves Orcus's side. The device, as evil as its creator, shares the demon lord's aim to snuff out the lives of all living things and bind the material plane in the stasis of undeath. The day of the dead. Orcus allows the wand to slip from his grasp from time to time. When it does, it magically appears wherever its master senses an opportunity to achieve some fell goal. Made from bones as hard as iron, the wand is topped with a magically enlarged skull that once belonged to a human uh, human hero slain by Orcus. The wand can magically change its size to better conform to the grip of its user. Uh, plants wither, drinks spoil, flesh rots, and vermins thrive in the wand's presence. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that it does, just some basic things. It gives you plus three to your armor class while you're wearing it. It has seven charges on it. And uh, you can use it to cast one of these spells. Animate Dead, Blight, Circle of Death, Finger of Death, Power Word Kill, or Speak with the Dead. Um, it can call undead. So you can, this is crazy, you can call forth as many skeletons or zombies as you want as long as their total health doesn't exceed 500 hit points. My God. Um, the wand has sentience to it. So it has an intelligence of 16, a wisdom of 12, and a charisma of 16. It has hearing and dark vision out to a range of 120 feet, and it speaks telepathically. 
Um, it has a personality, which is to, it wants to satisfy Orcus's desire to slay everything in the multiverse. The wand is cold, cruel, nihilistic, and bereft of humor. Um, and it, it feigns devotion to its current user uh, in order to kind of help Orcus out. And it makes grandiose promises that it has no intention of fulfilling, such as vowing to help its, ooh, this is a good one, such as vowing to help its user overthrow Orcus to become like the new Orcus or to this new power, or it wants freedom from Orcus, so it'll help you um, to destroy the wand. This is where the Day of the Dead could come in. Sorry, I've been rambling, everybody. You're fine, uh, you're reading. Dis- Destroying the wand of Orcus requires that it be taken to the positive energy plane by the ancient hero whose skull summons it. Uh, for this oh, to happen, the, it. the, it's actually mm-hmm. it, it has oh, to be surmounts. done by the hero that is sitting atop the skull, uh, atop the Exa- wand. Exactly. Now, for this to happen, the long lost hero must first be restored to life, which is not an easy task, given the fact that Orcus oh. has imprisoned the hero's soul and keeps it hidden and well guarded uh, bathing the wand in positive energy causes it to crack and explode but unless the above conditions are met the wand instantly reforms on orcus's layer of the abyss so that gives us a, a lot. quest that gives, gives us, us a quest a, yeah it gives us a lot the day of the dead is the only time that it gives us the ability to maybe transfer within to that plane to go mm-hmm. find that hero you have a time limit of being able to get them out um it's that that's exactly it this is this is what you got to do day of the dead is the time in which that those two planes intersect the closest which gives them the pathway between the li- the living and the dead your players are then tasked with going into finding that while maintaining while having this ar- this artifact the wand of orcus mm-hmm. they go in they find that guy and then they bring him back out or if they can't then they're trapped in there or something you know so on and so forth so but on and like so that, forth. Yeah, so on and so forth. It's the my favorite. It's my favorite way to get past anything that I can't properly explain. <laughs> <laughs> it's just throw a good so on and so forth. Et cetera, yeah, et cetera, cool. so on and so forth, you know? Uh, yeah, boom. Amazing story. You know, it started and then so on and so forth and it ended and it was just amazing. I'm sorry. Um, so, okay, so with this, uh, some things that we need is we need uh, to come up with whatever this hero is, unless you guys are more traditional, you could probably go find out uh, who that hero is. I highly recommend if you're wanting to go on that little adventure. Uh, there's a video that the Mighty Glue Stick does on YouTube. He's a fantastic uh, lore digger for the D, uh, D&D like, multiverse. He's amazing. His videos are incredible. Check him out. Um, but we need to have whoever that hero is. Um, we need to have kind of how our heroes uh, are going to come about knowing of this hero or, or whether they have the artifact and the artifact leads them to this hero or or whatever because um, the artifact makes those promises. We need to have whether they are going to truly destroy this artifact by trying to go into this plane of positive energy or whether they're just trying to temporarily get it away from this city. Um, yeah. okay. There's there's a few different things we need. What are you thinking, though? Let's start with the hero. The okay. hero to me would be you know sort of that i mean it's it's simplistic thinking but the cliched paladin great warrior that stood up to him and uh to orcus and i think orcus in a way as evil as he want is he wants to hold this paladin's head and spine above those who he defended all those times and so dude what's up what if what if the Okay, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make this work with the with the wand. I'm like I'm trying to have this like, okay. The image I had in my head is what if there's like this headless horseman type thing, like a death mm-hmm. knight or something, okay. who's like attacking this town or who is like attacking your party or whatever, um, and through that, your party you know learns of this dude's body or the the head somehow speaks to you or the spirit you know speaks to one of your religious party members in a dream or something like that mm-hmm. and tells you like hey like this headless horseman is just kind of out there until my body itself like my whole spirit my whole being can find rest um right and that's like oh, well how do we do that and he's like oh to find more you have to meet me meet me at this town on this day like and i'll be able to talk to you more or something like that Okay, and that would be the Day of the Dead? 
mm-hmm. that he's capable of being able to transfer over to be able to speak to them more more freely. And yep. he's a lost soul that's sort of being now. How do they attain? How do your players attain the? Well, okay, let's continue to fight. Like, go on that then. So he's. I do like the idea of this headless horseman that sort of torments a town, and mm-hmm. I guess he'd be also be spineless. <laughs> um, Especially, oh, that could be cool though. That could add some cool scenes of like him just having this unnatural ability to bend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which could be well, like super cool. Especially um, to go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Now I was just gonna say that makes sense too. Uh, uh, that could be like a good plot hook. Is during the specific month of the year, like this headless horseman comes out. Like never, he usually is not there any other time of the year. Mm-hmm. But during the Day of the Dead, like his body comes out and kind of torments the town yeah. because also his actual spirit is there and is right. able to kind of speak to people who would help. So it's kind of like a deterrent. Yeah, exactly. I like that. So then he he probably was a noble man as well um and he probably was a great warrior at times and that's why Mm -hmm. he's you know this armor clad sort of skeletal spirit of sorts that's sort of now just trying to find his body in a way like find Mm -hmm. the rest of him so that he can lay be laid to rest and then and orcus is the one who killed him and that's easy Mm -hmm. it's as simple enough as it as it gets right there it also ties into our little halloween stuff this is so fun i enjoy this Okay, so with Trick Evil treat. Artifact 2, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, of if we're given someone an Evil Artifact, if we're given someone the if we're given a party like the Wand of Orcus, where you can summon all these undead, I think what could be a cool twist, hear me out, is you have this every every year, you have this undead paladin, this death knight without a head that comes up, terrorizes this town, uh, and this year, maybe like the, these paladins of like Tyrim or or some kind of like paladins who are really against undead show up and this year they're going to take out this this death knight they're like we're gonna find it we're gonna kill it and we're gonna be done with it problem right. is when they do that they also kind of like even even more so hinder this other paladin from ever being able to be free so your party like he contacts your party is kind of like a Hey, I don't want you to kill these paladins, but you need to, you need to find a way of, of setting my spirit free before the paladins kill, you know, my body and take out my body for forever, or else I'll never be able to be free. And the so day maybe that they're going to plan on doing that is the day of the dead. Yes, and then yeah. maybe also in a way of you helping to like buy time, like he gives you permission to use, you know, because it's he's talking through the skull, I imagine. So maybe he gives you permission to use the the wand of Orcus, um, which is like his spine and his skull against these paladins, like because then you could use these cool features like call undead and like just mm-hmm. some like your party can now be like the have that moment of like we summon all these undead from the ground to like keep these paladins at bay. Um, and they can like kind of dress up in costumes so the paladins don't know who they are. Hey oh, hey oh. Um, maybe, dude, what if it's not so much they have to destroy this evil artifact? What if it's like these paladins are coming, misguided paladins are coming to end the, you know, the spooky shenanigans of this death knight. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said before, your party has to protect them and it's kind of more just like a trick or treaty. Your party dresses up and kind of has to play not to kill these paladins, but more just to keep them at bay for one night. And if they can keep them at bay for one night, then after that, they can let these paladins know, like, hey, here's how we can really defeat this revenant is by destroying right. this artifact. But well, we had to, thing. like... I yeah, have one ahead. plot hole in that the whole what? thing. The, why would the wand want you to help itself destroy itself? Hmm. Be- well, I don't think... Go ahead. Because, like, when it says earlier that you have to go find this long-lost hero, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got to... Go find them, pull them out, take them to that plane, and then that's when the uh, the 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 wand can be destroyed. I don't. Why, it, it doesn't make any sense to me why it would want to be destroyed. And hmm. so, part of me thinks, what if this spirit is a deception by Orcus himself? Mm, okay. Okay. And so he's like, "Oh, please help me! I I I, I must." 
I must have my skull back and I, I, I've got to get my body back together and everything like that. And so then when your, your players are taking, like you go and find the body or whatever, this, this ethereal projection, I guess that Orcus is laying out there, mm-hmm. you're taking them to the right stuff and everything. And then the moment you go to hand over the skull, you're essentially just handing it back to Orcus himself. I like that. Or even too, like going back to the idea of having those paladins, Mm-hmm. Like you make those paladins seem like they're misguided and like, like overly barbaric and just wanting to destroy this poor guy. When in reality, like maybe even Orcus kind of led them there and was like, "Hey, the wand of Orcus is going to be here on this night. You should totally show up and destroy it." Like through some agent or something. Yeah. Uh, and he gives you the wand because he wants those specific paladins dead for some reason. Right. Uh, yeah. If anything else, Orcus really. Orcus isn't necessarily like a planner. He just loves death. Like he just yeah. loves it. He loves people dying all over the place. Mm-hmm. And so he gives it's it's like a double whammy because he he sends these paladins to their presumed death. Then he gives the players the idea that this spirit that is unrested wants to like that's not a word, by the way. That is not even close to a word. Um the spirit that is like restless yes. is um he's like he's like going hey look don't kill him so he's giving them the idea of this this guy's trying to be a good person and he's trying to help you can control the wand you can really not kill yeah. him and it plays right into the wand cuz the wand mm-hmm. deceives all the time and so now i mean orcus has them running in circles essentially and then when they finally do like say for example they kill one or two of the paladins and then they then they return the wand and boom it's orcus yeah, it's a terrible feeling for your players at the time, but it's just a new tr- challenge for them to take over, right? Because, yeah. like, I don't think all stories, and I'm not saying, like, total campaign stories, but all, not all stories need to end in with a good note, you know? No. You need to sit yeah, there and they don't. that this is could be a great moment for the players to be like, oh, my God, what have we done? Exactly. And the Paladin's like, did you see what I told you? I told you for weeks! <laughs> and then, like, they, they'd have to, like atone to those paladins somehow which could be yeah. like helping them out or and they're like you, might you even... set us back so far we were so mm-hmm. close to killing off orcus mm-hmm. and look what you did yep Th- this but, is but but let's think more okay so i love all these ideas but let's think back to back to the session specifically mm-hmm. um so during this session we're setting our players up to be kind of like the you know trick-or-treaters got a kind of using evil "Quote unquote," protect this town from these paladins right. using the wand of Orcus. Okay. Um, so, what kind of things? What kind of spooky, spoopy things could could you see your party doing, or what scenarios could you see putting them into that they could then use this wand uh, to either good or bad effects? I mean, I fall into the you know, like what a child dresses up as in Halloween back in the day, mm-hmm. like dress one of them up as like a mummy. Um, they could all dress up like a witch. They could it, it just they could all be dressed up in certain costumes that represent things that maybe throw off the paladin scent, uh, or they're doing, or maybe does the, we could do a little bit of a a retrofitting here. But the wand could provide uh, properties to each of the players that give them benefits that whatever they dress up as would gain as well. That is so much like last week's episode, but um. It just in a much smaller form. Like uh, if you became a mummy, you, um, uh, what is it? I don't even know what a mummy actually would have, like what they, what they, what they gain. But like, it, you could do some you stuff could, with you could dress up like a vampire like or something like that and, yeah. and gain like lifesteal per hit or something. Uh, there, there's all these different like things like that. Is that what you're sort of thinking of? Or are you thinking more? Like, uh, what what is it that you're trying to, like, with these costumes? What is it that's, like, the ultimate goal with them? See, that's that's why I don't quite know. So I'm imagining, like, these paladins are here because they want to, you know, capture the Wand of Orcus, which hopefully your party believes is, you know, like, like the Wand said, like, hey, I'm trying to be free, okay? I'm trying to be free of Orcus. We can take down Orcus. You just have to, these paladins, as soon as they get me, they're going to destroy me. And that's, like that's bad or they're going to take me and they're going to take me somewhere and after this day i'm going to lose control of myself and start corrupting them so like you got to keep them from getting a hold of me so your players are kind of just trying to as much as they can 
keep these paladins from right from this artifact so it's almost like the paladins are the big bad of this session Mm -hmm. Um, and i think you're using things like you give them this like call undead bar where it's like you can create as many skeletons and zombies up to 500 health um so you can make like scenarios where like you know they're being chased by these paladins through the streets and they're wearing costumes uh because they don't want these paladins to know their true identity but maybe they don't care whatever uh, mm-hmm. And maybe they have to like fight these paladins off in a hallway or, you know, using some of these spells like speak with the dead or you could even give them some more like some things that maybe the wand of Orcus can't do that the book says it can do. But like you could have like you could do something with like affecting minds or like minor illusions or you could I mean, the wand itself has major and minor detrimental and beneficial properties that you mm-hmm. can give them like randomly Um so well, like, so, I, I do like I, the idea of a costume because I like the idea of a gear up scene for your players, mm-hmm. like a chink, like where they like you know you know what the movies do where it's like latch oh, up yeah. the grenade all that kind of stuff. So, but you lay out of ten costumes or so, and each one of them provides the player a, a benefit. Like you can, if you pick out the mummy costume, you're able to grapple this, um, be able to restrict this um, this paladin for. 1d4 turns uh with your wrappings or something like that and so it's like it gives you sort of an imbues these these extra powers onto your players that also gives them this sort of like spooky day of the dead feel to it as well and on top of that um they're they're you know they're dealing with like you could do the the vampire lifesteal you could do the witch has a gives it a broom and lets the player be able to fly all those kind of things so that while they're trying to maybe survey the land or just trying to understand how to keep these these guys from encroaching on this evil artifact, they're using these fun things that they haven't ever had a chance to do before. To me, mm-hmm. it falls right into like Halloween trick-or-treat. Here you go. Here's some little treats that you've never been able to do. You're not going to be able to do it after this, but this is the uh, power that's imbued upon you by the wand. For tonight. Yep, I For like tonight. that. You know I like I mean? that. Because then you can go with, like, the whole, like, yeah, like, ghosts could have, you could cast, like, Misty Step once or twice. Mm-hmm. Um, like, st- like Werewolf, you could have a s- benefit similar to Rage, where, like, you get resistance to damage and your right. movement speed's increased. Yeah, and uh, I also maybe... like the idea of it being sort of, remember the episode with uh, the UNT where they were coming into um, the yeah. pyramid and you're having to yep. defend multiple chokes? I like the idea of it sort of being like that, but it's like a Day of the Dead graveyard that's filled with a bunch of different pathways. And mm-hmm. so you can sort of choose to set this up the way that you want, you know, because you have time, because this wand has come to you. And it's saying, like, this is the only time that they're able to destroy me. I need you to protect me for this day. Then you can you can have, like, a little pumpkin patch or something like that. And I just thought about the the optics to me was funny because like if you summon an undead in the pumpkin patch and they come out of the ground and one of them with has pumpkins a pumpkin on, on their head, head. yes yeah. Dude, what <laughs> if even like... to what if like this is kind of like a so maybe you have like a dungeon or something like that as well that's underneath the city yeah. that way instead of you just kind of fighting in this overworld of like a city maybe mm-hmm. you're kind of like almost racing these paladins through this this dungeon Um, or you're kind of, I love the idea of it kind of being where these paladins have taken the spot of your adventurers. So like normally you are the party going through and stopping the, you know, or, or you're, you're fighting your way through the dungeon to, to get to the end room. Now it's kind of like your party is creating the the dungeon, creating the the dungeon and and they are the monsters. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. I love that. That could be a really cool a role reversal. Yeah. I know. Because then, cause then you That's have all good. these different, like, monsters and stuff that you could give them. Like, they could be, like, a Frankenstein flesh golem, or they could be ghosts. And, and you could just kind of flavor and say that the wand of Orcus is what lets them do this. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and you could just legitimately give them an inventory that they can pick from and then set yep. up this dungeon. And then they're the overwatching eyes of, like, trying to make sure that this dungeon does what it's supposed to do and they're trying mm-hmm. to keep you know plugging the holes with the fingers essentially trying exactly. to keep everything from falling apart on them i love and it maybe in, maybe instead of it being something too like 
where you know the wand gives them 500 health points to deal with you could up that mm-hmm. um or 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 maybe the 500 is more like instantaneously you can put 500 more hit points in this room but on top of that you have more of a, a setup phase where you can put up more health points um yeah. there's there's a lot of, i i like this a lot i love the ability of them kind of playing what's that old school game where you are like a evil dungeon lord who's like controlling a dungeon um, oh, i'm pretty sure that was like a game by ea um they got a bunch of bad rap well it's no ea Dun- remade it it had yeah. it back in the day it was great dungeon something Ugh, it's a legit like it's a simple name it's like dungeon master nope that's not something it. like that that's not it um i like that so it's like essentially these guys these like you said the paladins are the players and the players are the dm now um mm-hmm. I like that if you could set that up in a three-stage phase, sort of how they would go about accomplishing this as well, like city, Mm -hmm. graveyard. And I like the idea of the graveyard sort of being populated with people and people mourning or not mourning, but celebrating the death of the loved ones that they've had before. Um, And so you're having to sort of deal with a crowd at this point. Then you go down into the dungeon and the dungeon itself is like this large shrine that Mm -hmm. is for this great warrior or something like that you know what i mean and that's where and then you go down there and that's when you start doing your your dungeon diving stuff let's talk about the paladins okay how many is it do we base the paladins based off of the party or are there four paladins or the three how many do you bring i could see you doing like three paladins and like i'd like it to match the party um that way it's easy for the party to understand like well we are about this powerful so looking at the paladins, if it's kind of like mirroring them, they mm-hmm. might feel like, oh, okay, so these paladins are going for the same thing as we are. And it might not all be paladin. I could see you doing like, let's say you have four players. Mm-hmm. I could see you doing two paladins, a cleric who is your spellcaster, and then maybe like a fighter or a ranger to just have that like bow that like being able to go back and forth between range and close range. Right. Um, That way you kind of like, you know, it has that party feel. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of healing too. So it allows them to kind of like run this gauntlet. Um, yeah. But I, what if, I don't know, what do you think? I think that's the way to go. Um, I like, I, I like the idea of the paladins being sort of large meat shields mm-hmm. um, that are really, really great at killing a bunch of undead stuff. Like that's what yeah. they're really good at. Um, and I like See, having I, I, one cleric or something like that, like a bald cleric with like a wrap around hair, big beard, ball and chain mace, just beast. Like these guys are tanks. Yes. Like when they roll up into town, your players look at them and they're essentially like blizzard stylized characters with like yep. massive shoulder pads and huge yep. shields and gleaming in the sun, each having like a different color. Uh, but I think they're very vibrant um, but I want them to resonate with my players to where it's like, whoa, man, these guys are like, so this is what an adventuring party looks like, huh? Mm-hmm. Seeing one from the outside looking in. Which this could be something, too, that a low-level party, a low level party could be as well because they, they themselves mm-hmm. are kind of getting powered up. Yeah. Um, but so I, this image I just got in my head that I, I kind of love, I like to stick with, uh, but let me know, is is so you are in the big bad – you know, you are in the big bad's chamber, you know, the end boss room. And mm-hmm. before the paladins get there, maybe even this dungeon itself is like uh, uh, changeable. So you kind of get to the des- design everything of the dungeon. So like right. maybe you give your players like pre-made dungeon tiles or yeah. you give them like a, a sheet of graph paper and they, you know, maybe there's just one room in the dungeon that, you know, you draw on the piece of paper and everything else, like, they either roll for. Because I think there's a spot in the back of the DMG where for you can, like, for, a, for, for a rolling, dungeon. yeah, rolling for rooms or yes. something like that. Yes. So you could give yes. them so many rolls of each room. That way, like, they roll and it's like, okay, we have an observatory. Okay, we have, you know, an armory. Okay, we have this, we have that. And they kind of take these rooms and and fit them together into the dungeon, then they, from there, can kind of populate those rooms. Maybe you give them, like, a a set list of creatures. Like, you could say, hey, you have, you know, three spirits or three ghosts. 
that can possess objects and hide inside objects, like certain objects without taking damage. So those can be kind of like traps. You could set yes. those up in a room. You have one, you know, Medusa. So you could kind of try to set that up in a room with some mirrors. You have, um, or maybe you even have every player, kind of like last week too, like every player kind of controls a monster in particular. Mm-hmm. And they can kind of from this, I think everything, this this big bad you know, end game room kind of functions as their mission control. Um, yeah. So they can leave there if they want, like if the wizard wants to leave and cast some spells, um, or they can stick back in this room and kind of from this this room, you know, take control of certain creatures yeah. or certain packs that. of creatures. So like that. one one guy could control like seven skeletons. Another guy could control Medusa. Another person could control the flesh golem. Um, and it's like a tower defense game. It's literally like a tower defense game. Yep. <laughs> but that works. That works so well. And, be, and it's tower defense, except it's not like against a bunch of on. It's like not an onslaught of enemies. It's just four or X amount of paladins coming in, and they are there. Let's let's be clear. They are going to be wrecking shop on a lot of stuff. Oh like, yeah. It's not like. Like we want them to be strong, and we'll roll for them as as we do. Yeah. But, um, and we just and we would present initiative, um, in terms of like how would we do initiative in that sense? Like, you essentially would associate, uh, uh, make it one room at a time, essentially. But the biggest thing is like, if you have your players just sitting there waiting for their room, their room to come around, that can be boring, right? True. Well, that's where I think this whole mission control room thing kind of comes in. They can see where the paladins are going, uh-huh. um, and they can kind of, you know, it, at a, at the drop of a yeah, they can direct stuff from there, or at, at the drop of a hat, they can possess a creature. Um, that way, gotcha. it kind of lets them see what's happening. But so I'm actually looking. Page two ninety two of the DMG has the the lists for different dungeon rooms and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and there are quite a few rooms. Well, I was going to say, I could see this being something where you maybe have your players roll um, for these rooms. So there's yeah. like, the there's different types of dungeons. There's uh, Death Trap, there's Lair, there's Maze, uh, there's Mine, there's uh, Planar Gate, Templar Shrine, mm-hmm. Stronghold, Tomb, Treasure Vault. So maybe you, maybe you give them the, uh, the, the like, three... Like I, I could see for this one, you picking um, that this is a tomb. It is a um, you can roll on tomb, on general dungeon chambers, and on layer. So mm-hmm. your players kind of go around Red Robin and they pick between either rolling for the layer, rolling for the general dungeon chambers, or rolling for tomb. And they roll their dice, and that's the the room they get. And they roll until they get so many rooms. Right. Um, I love that. Then, then from there, they go ahead and depending on what rooms they have, you. I think that this session is going to require a certain amount of you being able to to roll with the punches. Because I think if even just looking at general dungeon chambers, like this list, there are a good probably 50 things on this list. And it would take a long time to stat out what all those things could do. So I feel like you have to be okay if your players roll that they get the workshop, they get a you know uh, perception or reception room, they get a pantry, and they get a guard room. Like you as the DM have to be good at saying, or maybe even asking your party, what do you think should be in this room? What Absolutely. creatures? That's what you got to do. You, do. Exactly. you have to. Out, yeah, you you've got to uh, outsource one hundred percent of that oh, work yeah. right there. I mean, it, it, the other way you could do that, though, is that you could have them then piece those pieces together. So yes. we could put size limits on. Oh, and then you could do size to the room as well with a with a roll as well. Oh, so I could, like that. You know, like here's a 10 by 10 room or like do a 1D8 or a 1D6. Let's do 1D6. You could do um, 1 to 2 is a small, 2 to 3 is a medium, 3 to 4 or 4 to... Three to four is a medium. Five to six is a is a large room, and then mm-hmm. then they get you know to shape that room based off of the like you give them three you can give them three different um, layouts of a large room, 
three different layouts of a medium room, three different layouts of a small room, and then yep, they can like that. piece those together. Does that make sense? Yep. No, it makes complete sense. Okay. I think along with that too, you let them have a certain amount of rooms that can be trick rooms mm-hmm. um, or trap rooms, I guess, not trick rooms. Um, so like, because there's traps on page 296 too, just in general ones. So yeah. you could, like that way they can pick, so if they get a room like a trophy room, and if they want to, they could leave that and put monsters in there, or they can put a trap in there. Yeah. Um, but they can only do that so many times. Exactly. It's just a limited. It's it's all about the inventory that they've got. Here's your Lego pieces. Build yep. your building. Yeah. I think Which it's I a think... really. Cool, it would be so cool for your players. This is the second time exactly. they've actually had to do it in our campaign. So. Yep. Yep. In our um, large, overarching, very, very ADD campaign, we. <laughs> <laughs> like it does kind of happen all over the place, but yeah, uh, if, our, if our actual show was the way that players had to traverse a, a, a campaign, they would be like, "Wait, what? Why are we in a painting?" And then the next week, they're like, "We're in a pyramid now. What are we doing here? What is happening?" <laughs> it's kind of like, it. It would be more. Our campaign would be more like a retelling of a story. It, it would have to be like our adventures are at a tavern telling individual stories to yeah. people who are listening that could be the, that could be the flashback you know so every session's a flashback um except for if your character dies they're like yeah that was crazy how i died that one time right <laughs> but then uh we uh, they brought me back to life so then, then they downloaded the <laughs> restoration scroll dlc and here i am so <laughs> here i am no that's another story though for another time um <laughs> Dude, I love it though because you give them, you can give them just, okay, here you get, oh, and a maze would be fun. Mm-hmm. That would, see, and then, like I said about outsourcing, you can just go like, here, here are your pieces. Here's how to build your map. Y'all get together, build this map. And then while they're building the map, you have a list of the rooms that they've gotten. And that's when you can start doing some flourishes with those rooms. And you can tell them what they gain from having those rooms. Yeah. Because if you did that with every single one of these lists, you would you would die oh yes like you'd be preparing for forever um maybe one thing too if you wanted to maybe your players could do that is you could since this whole dungeon we said is kind of like moldable too Mm -hmm. um maybe once per the entire time the paladins are there you have the ability of as long as the paladins aren't in the room you can like at one time swap this room and this room like swap it's like location just I think little things like little things like that that really make your players feel like hey I'm an evil overlord in charge of a dungeon like I am a big bad boss and I feel fantastic they're doing the right thing exactly yep I love it I love they're doing the right thing with the powers of the bad guy yeah I can't wait to pull the rug out from under him that's exactly like this is great I love that 100% Mm mm-hmm that's fantastic, man. Yeah, that's I think it'll whole, be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the whole thing, though. So it's 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 just paladins meet the paladins. They you you get met by the guy that has the the wand, the spirit that has the wand. Mm-hmm. It's the projection of Orcus, and then you lead them through, and then so on and so forth. That's like the whole thing, though, right? We're not missing anything. I don't think so. Component of it. Okay, what happens if they get to the wand and destroy it? Oh, well, I guess. I guess it's like a matter of they they do destroy it and the wand of Orcus is destroyed. That's just what it is. What it is, and then you have to deal with those those consequences. How but do I you, think okay, with that I, too? Go ahead. I think even if they get there and they do destroy the wand, like I think the paladins hopefully will be able to kind of understand like you guys were probably being manipulated by this wand. Um, right. Right. So you could is there easy hesitance. On them. Is there hesitance by the paladins or hesitance by you, the DM? What do you mean? Like, will you hesitate to, will the paladin realize that they're not being bad people uh, through you as the DM? Or will you, uh, in the background, take I feel care like, of them? Well, I feel like the reason these paladins are here is because Orcus wants them to be here and wants you to kill them. Um, right. That's why he's putting you in charge of this whole dungeon thing with this whole story. Uh, I think the paladins would they they would not hesitate in a fight. So if your players are fighting the paladins, they are going to 
like knock them unconscious. Um, I think once they're knocked unconscious, they wouldn't. Nec- I don't think they would go for kill shots. I think they'd go for incapacitating through any means necessary, even if it's excessive means. And then after that, they would like bind you, because if anything else, they want to at least they want to interrogate you to be like, hey, how did you? How were you guys doing this? How did right. you know about this wand? Like, are there more people working for you? But paladins have spells that help them do that too. Like they could cast Zone of Truth. And mm-hmm. that way, too, your party can be like, you know, you cast Zone of Truth, you guys cannot tell a lie. And it's like, well, we're here because this spirit said to help us. And your paladins can use that to kind of eventually be like, okay, cool. This is making sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, kiddo, come on over here. Let me show you something real quick. You see this spirit? And he pokes him with a sword. And then he turns into Orcus, like an Orcus uh, projection. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yep. Just like I thought. You've got demon problems in this Happens dungeon. every year. <laughs> Starts shaking up a bottle of Raid. He's all, don't worry. This is demon be gone. Tss. <laughs> orc is like, this is <laughs> Um, oh Man, I had a thought in my head, and now it is completely gone. Damn it. Um, it was something good. A thought me. I'll throw out. Something that your players could use um, is if you wanted to, you could use, you could let your players use the like challenge rating and counter system and counter build system where yeah. you build an encounter using so many experience points. Oh, yeah. Um, like and that. that you could like, you could give your players like, Hey, after they roll for the dungeon, you could give them like a monster manual and a time limit and say like, Hey, this is how much experience points you have to buy monsters. Um, so I, I don't know what numbers that is off the top of my head, but you give them like a, a budget essentially, and then they're flipping through the monster manual saying, oh, we got to have some of these. Okay, let's get some zombies in here. Oh, it'd be sweet if we had a troll. Oh, it'd be awesome if we had this. Um, and they are kind of going through and, and buying these monsters using their pool of experience points. Yeah, I love that actually. Because I, I feel that. like it's, it's resource management, which I feel yeah. like, you know, every now and again having that, well, I think I love having that in the game but giving that ability for your party members to be able to have. And I think some of them too might even use this as an opportunity to them one day be like, you know what? That was kind of fun. If this is kind of close to what DMing is like, Oh dude, a hundred percent. It's exactly mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah. Me and you in lockstep. I gotta say it's been an, it's been a rich MVP level, but, uh, episode, but, um, you know, sometimes I just open my mouth and hope things come out that sound. Okay. And sometimes I open my mouth and um, I just start puking all over my mic. So we have to re-record. This is the fourth <laughs> time today. Um, I was thinking of what you could do with that wand as well. Is like Orcus mm-hmm. wants them to kill those paladins. But he doesn't want to make it seem like he wants to kill those paladins. Because the spirit's a nice little guy. So mm-hmm. every, like, I don't know, three or four uses or just every three or four rounds or whatever it may be. I don't know how you're going to track this this mission, but the damage they do is, like, tripled. And mm-hmm. they're like, whoa, that was odd. That mm-hmm. was weird. Yep. And the spirit's like, oh, I don't know anything about it. That's... Sometimes I lose control. <laughs> yep, yep. And And so you can plant the seeds for your players of, like, wow, man, he doesn't really want to kill these monsters, but... Or these paladins, but man, he sure he's trying his darndest. Hell of, <laughs> yeah, he's really doing a hell of a job here, Bill. That's a uh, that's the spirit's name, Bill the spirit. Bill, Bill the spirit. I like that. <laughs> I love oh, what was that. I gonna say I too? Um, ah, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot! I totally forget. Ah, it's gonna bug me. Um, it's awful, man. It's the worst feeling in the world when, when you, you have, have a little... legitimate gut thought. Because that was the thought I lost earlier. Was the the extra damage on a, a thing and i was like man i'm glad i got that out because it's good stuff but Boom. or at least to me it's good stuff but i got it i got it back you got it okay hey. so last night in my session um we were doing a lot of out of combat kind of like espionage npc talking stuff like that um uh, but they were all trying to break out of you know this bandit camp um so my player uses his familiar cast thunder wave onto it which actually thinking back upon it rules lawyers out there will agree i don't think you can cast thunder wave into a familiar because a familiar can only cast spells or transfer spells that have the radius or the range of touch anyway not thinking about that now 
Um, so he has this thunder wave go off. You're a terrible go, DM. I know. Terrible, terrible. To blow off this this trap that's keeping all these giant centipedes at, at bay. As that happens, I have some very Warhammer 40k um, paladins, actually, that burst into this camp as well. And they're bursting into this camp to kill everything. In, like including your they they don't have they're not here to to differentiate they think everyone in this camp is a bandit mm-hmm. so instead of having true initiative rolling combat take place um we did more of a you you guys are going to have your turn the bandits are going to have their turn and the paladins are going to have their turn and it was more side, of a side initiative yeah yep and yeah. it's more just like yeah. but we didn't even really necessarily roll I kind of just did more of like a, like you know, uh, any any movie you see where like there's like crazy combat going on and everyone just kind of seems to hit, like mm-hmm. like they they don't really have a lot of scene like throwaway scenes of like people missing or people like it's just all action all the time. That's kind of what this was. It was like, what do you want to do? You want to you want to throw? You want to shoot an arrow? Cool, you hit, and it's just very intense action going on all the time. Um, like massive amounts of movement and stuff like that. And would I do it every combat? No. But my players were all like, dude, for this moment, it felt very punchy. It felt very chaotic. It felt very... And and that could be something that you have go on for this dungeon. Like maybe it's not every room is true initiative. Like every room is, okay, they entered into this room. Better roll initiative for these 12 skeletons you guys bought. Um, maybe it's more of just a, okay, the paladins are in this room. It's their turn. They do this. It's your skeletons turns. They do that. Um, yeah. that way it's, it's much less, faster. It, it'll because be much my faster. Goodness gracious. If you did that, this is a four session. Oh session. yeah. Easily. Cause dungeons yeah. take like, take a while to run through. So I think right. having that more fast punchy way of doing things could be could be fun for your players it helps it wrap up in an evening instead of it being like well i'd actually like to play D again instead of you dming us dming r- your players whatever however that actually works <laughs> i hate you i quit <laughs> that's like they're like i don't want to dm what are you doing to me yeah if but yeah i do back to that thing that you said about players um being like oh man, the, the, if this is what DMing's like. This is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I'm all about that because that's what this podcast to me in a lot of ways. Um, I was talking to Lagravy about this. Most people, uh, this is off subject. Just excuse me for a second, Rich. But that's fine. Most most people listen to this podcast, and and I I made the assumption that most people through about twenty to twenty five minutes have tuned us out. Oh yeah, and not in Completely. the bad way. Not in a bad way. I think that we do a good job of at least setting seeds within the head, the head of somebody, and then they then they start to do what they do from there. Because the beauty is is that the imagination is within everybody that's listening. Not, I mean, we are only just two guys just talking about this stuff that truly enjoy it. But uh, I find it so much fun. So if we can create campaigns or create create sessions that give people the courage to DM differently or give people the courage to actually just be a dm in and of itself mm-hmm. it's a wildly vulnerable thing to be i think yep. and i just think it's a i think it's a lot of fun i know this is off subject but it was something i thought needed to be said i just yeah. I, I uh i love what we do man i enjoy yeah. the hell out of this and it's i a lot enjoy of fun. i enjoy everybody that has joined us on this journey so far it's been mm-hmm. a blast so sorry that was off subject completely it's okay Anyways, the spoopy season. Undead. It has your heart all full of emotions. <laughs> yeah, man. I, these paladins. I honestly want the paladins. <laughs> these paladins to are the getting door. to me. Yeah, I want the paladins to kick the door down, just beat the shit out of your uh, your player characters, and then it's, and then you just look to your players and you go, "These are your new characters. You're welcome. <laughs> these are your new characters now." They're like, "But I love Jessica," and it's like, "Don't even worry about her anymore." Now you get Thunder, the paladin boy. Dude, it's that'll be. That would be one crazy twist is to have these be your party from the future. <laughs> now we're just getting off subject here and we're just going all over the place. I love it. Hey, can the you give me a, 
Go ahead. Your, no, your party it. came back from the pu- future to defeat yourselves before you went evil. Because if you would have finished this quest, then the wand would have corrupted you and started a whole new timeline where your players are the evil players. So these guys are coming back to stop themselves from becoming evil. There's the twist. Who's that in the distance over there? Oh, it's Bible Man! Yeah, exactly. Giant, giant mech comes down, stomps on everybody, everybody's dead. <laughs> Boom. Got him. Got him. If I if I had a character from the future, he would have a scar over his right eye. Oh. And he'd have a full head of hair, even though yep. I'm bald currently. Yep. And he'd have a full head of hair and he'd be like, You better watch yourself, kid. <laughs> and I was like, Oh man. And he's smoking a cigar. Yes, and of course. Because all of us in the future develop a smoking problem. That just seems to be how it is. Yeah. The future 100%. just really takes it out of you. It's actually cleaner air than the air you breathe in the future. It's exactly. Just smoke. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's better to do it that way. I love it. Can you give me a summary while I uh, summarize? That's right. It's your week for the synopsis. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. So the summary of this week's session is kind of a role reversal between you and your players. So you are actually going to go ahead and give them the ability to run their own dungeon. They're going to be the big bad evil guys in charge of a dungeon trying to keep an adventuring party from rescuing this or from really destroying this wand of Orcus. They've been manipulated into believing that this this wand needs to be kept safe so it can be used to go ahead and destroy uh, Orcus. But um, how this goes ahead and happens is you give your players the ability to uh, maybe using craft paper or white race board, whatever you want, uh, to roll using the D- excuse me the DMG or any other resource where they could roll for certain rooms in a dungeon. Then using a point by system, maybe the one D and D gives you, you give them so many experience points they flip through the monster manual, purchasing different minions. They drop them into a dungeon. Uh, that way you can kind of let your players control and create a dungeon that then you run the adventuring party through. Please do not run this as if uh, it's actually true combat. We don't actually want this to be you, the DM, running combat against your players. Uh, it's more just a, hey, try to stop this. Here's some resource management. But it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Cam, did that give you enough time? Yes. Um, I want you to to pick between the two of these. Okay. I was thinking of setting the scene with the paladin standing over the table discussing what they're going to do mm-hmm. or uh, the paladins are at the door coming like right right around the corner of the main control room of the dungeon. Um, what would the one of them outside the like discussing what they're going to do? What does that look like? It's essentially like the four of them standing over the table. And, and the paladins are like discussing the party itself um, and it's kind of like a cutaway uh, it'd be like a cutaway from in a movie where it's like these dudes doing their like load up scene and they're just like yeah and I heard there's a half orc named titty mongers <laughs> or something I, I like, you know cause yep. like cause all I the players always pick the names <laughs> but I think that sounds good let's go with that okay let's do the four paladins well, cool. before we do that before we do that can we give them four names? The let's, paladins? Let's, yes, let's give the paladins. Officer, our Chad. paladin, uh, paladin Chad. Chad, Veronica, oh, um, yes. Brock, and I'm just trying to think of really cliche names. Chad, Veronica, Brock, and... Um, De- De- Dolores. Dolores. Boom. Okay, I'm ready to go. Go ahead, it's this all is you, gonna friend. going to be a nightmare. <clears throat> Alright, I have called you on the three paladins today to discuss the destruction of the Wand of Orcus. Um, I don't know, pro- Paladin Chat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh man. Um... Is everything okay, Paladin Veronica? <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. This is so good. <laughs> this is going poorly. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Anyways, let's try this again. I've called you here today to set up this meeting so that we could destroy the Wand of Orcus. It's messing shit up. Oh, yeah, you think so, Paladin Chad? I do think so, Paladin <laughs> Veronica. What about you, Paladin Brock? Eh, I don't know. I'm Paladin Brock. Yeah, that's what they call me. I'm the freaking uh, cleric of the bunch. 
I think we need to get in there and take care of those four hoodlums that keep on trying to help this evil spirit out. What do you think, Dolores? It's Paladin Dolores to you, idiot. Anyways, let's get going. Anything else, Paladin Chad? Yeah, I was thinking one more thing. Anybody got some ass kicking cans to open? <laughs> yeah! And they, then they bust <laughs> down the door. Door flies open. <laughs> like right out on the horses. And I want them to be the four stooges. Now, I, oh I didn't think about it before. I love that. But I yep. need them to be four meatheads yep. of like, yeah, I, they have to be that. Man, last week, best synopsis ever. This week, probably our worst synopsis ever. So It was a hard one to do a synopsis. Like, I'll give you real. that. Like, I was like, well, oh, thank you man. for not telling me straight out that it was trash. I appreciate that. Well, I, it was, I don't, I wouldn't know how to do a synopsis for this one. Uh, but everybody else, thank you so much for listening to a very different episode of Filling the Gaps, which I feel like is how we end every episode of Filling the Gaps, because every episode thing. is so different. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you guys kind want the, to. Kind of what we do on our show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So this is your first episode. It's more of this, which I don't know what that means. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys have any suggestions for themes or scenarios for us to use on our show, we'd love to hear your suggestions, uh, either at fill in in the gaps with an, uh, with no G on Twitter, uh, filling in the gaps on Instagram and on Reddit, or you can actually find our discord as well. What's our discord name? Fill in the gaps as well. Yeah. Fill in the gaps. It's and, that and if you easy. go to one of those three social media sites, we actually have a where to find us, uh, pages on those as well. Boom. So if you find one, you found them all. Uh, you can actually also listen to us on YouTube as well. Uh, and we cannot wait for next week's ha- spooky Halloween episode, which will be a lot of fun. Ooh. So hopefully you guys will be able to tune in then as well. Uh, with that being said, we hope you guys have a great week and that something from this session helped spark an idea for your next game night. We'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>